The Second Battle of Champagne Herb Schlacht or Autumn Battle in World War I was a French offensive against the German army. Topic. Battle On 25 September 1915, 20 divisions of the 2nd Army and 4th Army of Groupe d'Armées du Centre GAC, Central Army Group, attacked at 9.15 am, with each division on a 1,500–2,000 yards 1,400–1,800 metres front. A second line of seven divisions followed, with one infantry division and six cavalry divisions in reserve. Six German divisions held the line opposite, in a front position and a reserve position the R. Stelling Ruckstellung, reserve position further back. French artillery observers benefited from good weather but on the night of 24–25 September, heavy rain began and fell until midday, the German front position was broken in four places and two of the penetrations reached as far as the R. Stelling, where uncut barbed wire prevented the French from advancing further. The French took 14,000 prisoners and several guns, but French casualties were also high. The Germans had anticipated the French attack, having been able to watch the French preparations from their high ground and outposts. The main defensive effort was made at the R. Stelling, behind which the bulk of the German field artillery had been withdrawn. A supporting attack by the French Third Army on the Aisne took no ground. Joffrey allotted two reserve divisions to the GAC and ordered the Groupe d'Armes de Lay Guy, Eastern Army Group, to send all 75 mm field gun ammunition, except for 500 rounds per gun, to the Second and Fourth Armies. On 26 September, the French attacked again, closed up to the R. Stelling on a 7.5-mile front and gained a foothold in one place. Another 2,000 German troops were captured but attacks against the R. Stelling from 27 to 29 September, broke through on 28 September. A German counterattack next day recaptured the ground, most of which was on a reverse slope, which had deprived the French artillery of ground observation. Joffrey suspended the offensive until more ammunition could be supplied and ordered that the captured ground be consolidated and cavalry units be withdrawn. Smaller French attacks against German salients continued from 30 September to 5 October. <laughs> Aftermath <laughs> Analysis On 3 October, Joffrey abandoned the attempt at a breakthrough in Champagne, ordered the local commanders to fight a battle of attrition and then terminated the offensive on 6 November. The offensive in Champagne had advanced the French line for about 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles, at a cost of c. 100,000 more French and British casualties than German losses. The French had attacked in Champagne with 35 divisions against the equivalent of 16 German divisions. On the Champagne front, the 4th, 2nd and 3rd armies had fired 2,842,400 field artillery and 577,700 heavy shells, which with the consumption in Artois during the Third Battle of Artois, exhausted the French ammunition supply. 
French methods and equipment were insufficient for the demands of trench warfare and a lull followed, as the French rested the survivors of the offensive, replaced losses and accumulated more equipment and ammunition. On the 22nd of October, Joffrey claimed that the autumn offensive had resulted in important tactical gains, inflicted many casualties and achieved a moral superiority over the Germans and that only a lack of artillery had led to a failure to achieve the strategic objectives of the offensive. To keep as many German troops as possible away from the Eastern Front, offensive operations must continue but troops in the front line were to be kept to the minimum over the winter and a new strategy was to be formulated. The theoretical bases of the French offensives of 1915 had been collected in but at conditions d'une action offensive d'ensemble purpose and conditions of all offensive action the 16th of April 1915 and its derivative note 5779 which had been compiled from analyses of reports received from the front since 1914 the document contained instructions on infiltration tactics, rolling barrages and poison gas, which were to be used systematically in continuous battles to create rupture Continuous battle was to be replaced by step-by-step -step advances, through successive German defence lines. Methodical attacks were to be made each time and would inexorably consume German infantry reserves. The German defences would eventually collapse and make a breakthrough attack feasible. The slower, more deliberate methods, would conserve French infantry, as they battered through the deeper defences built by the Germans since 1914. In the autumn battles, the Allies had outnumbered the West here German army in the West by 600 infantry battalions but had not achieved a breakthrough and after the first day, German reinforcements made one impossible. Several divisions had returned from the Eastern Front but were tired and of little value. The German commander-in-chief, General Erich von Falkenhayn had underestimated the possibility of an offensive and kept the Oberst Heersleiding German High Command reserve spread all along the Western Front, rather than concentrating it in threatened areas. French reviews of the offensive found that reserves had moved close to the front, ready to exploit a breakthrough and had advanced on time. The troops had then become bunched up with the leading divisions, blocked the lines of communication and suffered many casualties, while held up. Communications failed and commanders had been in ignorance of the situation, artillery coordination with the infantry had been poor and rain grounded French artillery observation aircraft. Many of the French commanders concluded that a breakthrough could not be forced in one attack and that it would take several set-piece battles, to make the defenders collapse and be unable to prevent a return to mobile operations. The German report, Experiences of the Third Army in the Autumn Battles in the Champagne, 1915, noted that unyielding defence of the most forward positions had failed several times, because the attackers had severely damaged German field fortifications and cut the barbed wire obstacles in front of them, by long artillery bombardments. The second position had not been broken into and the Third Army reported that the decision to construct the second position had been vindicated, since the French had to suspend their attacks until artillery had been moved forward, which took until 4 October. The momentum of the initial breakthrough had not been maintained, because the French troops crowding forward had become disorganised, which made coordinated attacks impossible to arrange. 
French prisoners were reported to have said that there had been no methodical staging of the reserves to exploit a breakthrough and concluded with the view that a breakthrough might still be possible. Lack of troops made it impossible for the Germans to respond with big counter attacks, but smaller, hasty counter attacks by local troops had succeeded against French units weakened by losses, which had not had time to consolidate captured ground. It was recommended that such reserves should be made available by reducing the number of German troops in the front line, as one man every 2 to 3 metres yards in the front line was enough. Cooperation between all arms, assistance from neighbouring sectors and the exploitation of flanking moves had defeated the French offensive. More intermediate strong points, built for all-round defence were recommended, between the first and second positions. Defence of the first position was still the intention but deeper defences would dissipate the effect of a breakthrough and force the attackers to make numerous individual attacks, in areas where local knowledge and preparation of the ground would be advantageous to the defenders. Observation posts should be made secure from attack, reconnaissance reports acted on promptly and communication links were to be made as robust as possible. A wide field of fire was unnecessary and to be dispensed with, to make each part of the position defensible by placing defences on reverse slopes, concealed from ground observation in his memoirs 1919, Falkenhayn wrote that the autumn battle showed that on the Western Front, quantity was not enough to defeat armies sheltering in field defences. The lessons to be deduced from the failure of our enemy's mass attacks are decisive against any imitation of their battle methods. Attempts at a mass breakthrough, even with the extreme accumulation of men and material, cannot be regarded as holding out the prospects of success and that the plans made earlier in 1915, for an offensive in France were obsolete. Falkenhayn needed to resolve the paradoxical lessons of the war since 1914, to find a way to end the war favorably for Germany, which culminated at Verdun in 1916, when Falkenhayn tried to induce the French to repeat the costly failure of the Second Battle of Champagne. Casualties The offensive had been disappointing for the French. Despite their new attack in echelon, they had only made quick progress during the time it took for the Germans to strip reserves from elsewhere and rush them up. They had lost 145,000 men, while the Germans had 72,500 casualties. Foley gave 97,000 casualties based on Der Weltkrieg, the German official history. The French had taken 25,000 prisoners and captured 150 guns. In Der Weltkrieg, French casualties in the 4th, 2nd and 3rd armies from 25 September to 7 October were recorded as 143,567 men, with 48,230 more casualties in the 10th Army from 25 September to 15 October and 56,812 casualties in the British First Army from the 25th of September to the 16th of October a total of c 250,000 casualties against c 150,000 losses in the German armies of which 81,000 casualties were suffered in the Champagne battle from the 22nd of September to the 14th of October 
The French official history recorded 191,795 casualties in the fighting in Champagne and Artois. Topic Notes Equals equals footnotes <laughs>